Hello and welcome everyone to anubotrainings.com. In this episode, we will learn how to create your destination in SAP Cloud Platform to be able to connect to your real-time SAP system. So many a times you would need a destination to be able to talk to your OData service, which is deployed in your real-time on-premise system or onto the cloud system. Now, of course, when you're working with on-premise system, you would also need cloud connector, but we are not going to discuss cloud connector in this episode, but we just see what would it need to be able to do a handshake at least from cloud platform and then use that destination from SAP Business Application Studio to talk to your OData service in OP system. So let's look at the approach what we're going to do. It's very straightforward and simple. The way you would have worked with Web IDE in the past, same thing you're going to do, but just with little bit of additional parameter. So on one side, we have SAP Cloud Platform, and in this case, Cloud Foundry. And then on other side, we have our SAP S4 HANA system, for example, as an OP system. Now, of course, if it is an on-premise system, then you would need SAP Cloud Connector, which opens up a secure connection to the cloud from on-premise. And you would have also a virtual host, which is configured here. But for, for keeping it simple, I'm not going to discuss Cloud Connector in this session, but just imagine you have the host name of your on-premise system with you. Now from here, from the Cloud Foundry side, we have our SAP Business Application Studio, BAS, which is what would need a connection to be able to develop applications with this existing on-premise system connectivity. And that's where what we're going to do is we are going to use something like a destination, which will help us to connect. Now, if you're using cloud application programming model, CAPM, or you are using a Fury app development, usually, um, this destination is accessed via your Fury application via a backing service called Destination Service. Now, that's something you can learn in my SAP Cloud Platform upcoming course on Cloud Foundry. But right now, I'm not going to cover that as well. I'm just going to show how to maintain a destination and then see that destination being connected from the BAS. So our main focus of this episode is only focusing on this part. And then, of course, ex experiencing how we can use this destination which we created in the BAS. So that is what the intention of this, this course is. And that's how the handshake between the on-premise and the cloud system, uh, Cloud Foundry, will take place to be able to develop um, Fury service or Fury applications using this um, connectivity. Now, the process of creating destination is more or less same but accept that there will be an additional parameter which you would also want to add to be able to do and then also exclude one additional parameter which we used to add as part of the destination. We are going to see this process end to end. Now, as part of this, the very first thing is you need to find out what's the host name of your application and what's the port number you would like to connect. Remember, uh, we typically use uh, the HTTP or HTTPS and the port number for HTTP and HTTPS both are different. So for this, we use transaction code SMICM in our on-premise system to be able to go back and check the, the port numbers, which is what I will show you as a step one. In step two, we will go to our Cloud Foundry account and we will create a destination. And in step three, we will go to BAS and see if we are able to consume and see the destination as part of the uh, business application studio. So let us go ahead and see that. Now for security reasons, I will be masking some of the important confidential properties like related to my business application server as part of this video, but at least you will get an overall big picture how you could do it with your own on-premise system. Yeah, let me switch it over to Cloud Foundry. Now I'm on my Cloud Foundry cockpit and let me enter in my trial account. And once this connects, we will go to right away the destinations tab, which is where we will see 
our destinations which are configured in the system. So you can see it opens up. We will go to our SIP account. And then you can see here we have a section called connectivity and we click on destination in the connectivity. And once we are here, we will see right now there is no con connection at this point in my cloud account and I would want to create one. So of course there are two options. One is uh, creating a new destination from scratch. Another is importing. Now you can definitely import any destination if you already have it in the past. And those who are using my server, then you can also get this as part of the documentation which we offer. And then you can directly import that file over here to get that created out of the box for you. But I will go with the complicated one. I say new. And here is where we can get started with the destination. So now I would need, first of all, the connection name. So we'll keep it as S4HANA server. And I will use port as HTTP. Now, then we will give a description for this. So, okay, I just have to use only characters are allowed. So this will be the name. I will just give it S4D, for example. And we will give a description here. My S4HANA system. And at this point, we have to give the URL. Remember, I'm selecting HTTP which means the port which I should use is also HTTP. So for that, we will switch over back to our SAP system. And here is where we type transaction code SMICM and I press enter. So once you go to SMICM and here is where you can see the services. And now you can see uh, the HTTP service port number and also the host name. I will just copy this host name and port number from my system and the port and uh, you can see it's 8001 for HTTP port. I will just grab this up and copy it using control Y. Now let me just copy it completely and also the port number. I will switch back to SAP Cloud Platform. Just put that HTTP and my port number, uh, um, the server name and of course Port number is 8001 for HTTP connection. All right. Now, as the next step, we can also give authentication. So unnecessarily system won't prompt me again and again for username and password. So let me go ahead and provide my username for above system. And make sure that this user which you are using has proper authorizations in assigned to this user to be able to access the catalog service. Uh, which is the uh, the service offering uh, for the rest of the service information from S4 system. And then on the right side, we add three important properties. And in addition to that, two more properties will come up um, over here, which are required to be able to connect from BAS. So first is Web IDE usage. Second is Web IDE enabled. Third is Web IDE system. And now there are two more extra property which you have to type in to be able to connect it from the BAS. So first of all, Web ID enabled is true. Web ID system is my three digit system ID, which you can find from our SAP system. Or usually all SAP systems have this three digit system ID. And then in the Web ID usage, we used to put different use cases like OData gen, OData above and stuff. So be careful here, you have to give them properly. So first is you should not use um, the property called OData, um, OData Dev yeah, or OData Gen. You should use OData ABAP, UI5 Execute underscore ABAP and Dev underscore ABAP. These only the three values you should uh, use. You should not use anything else other than that. So as you can see Dev underscore ABAP comma uh, UI5 execute ABAP and OData underscore ABAP. Don't use OData underscore gen here. If you wanted to use this destination from, from the cloud, um, uh, the, the new BAS tool, all right? So this is a very important setting. Many of you have this tend to tendency to write OData gen. 
please ignore that. And now there's another property which we have to also include called HTML5 dot dynamic destination as true. So that's something which you have to type in. It won't be there in the drop down. So we just type in that HTML5 dot dynamic destination, both D and D are capital. And we will just give this. And then we will also provide HTML5 dot timeout property which you can give it probably as let's say 60 as a as a integer value so this is all is bare minimum we need to be able to create our destination and now we can go back and just save this and you can see my destination is saved now right after the save is done you would just do a check connection over here uh, so let me press the check connection And you can see my connection to my S4D system has been established. Now, please note here, this icon must turn green. If this icon is red, then your connection is not going to be successful. If this icon is turning green, that's a good news. You will be able to use this connection for, uh, for your connectivity for sure. Yeah, so now moving on, uh, you can see here response return 404 not found. Don't panic with this, it's okay. It's okay if you see this, but the important is this icon should turn green. I can close this and right away switch to my uh, business application studio Bass. And here is where I am spinning a virtual machine where I have the necessary tools configured to be able to develop my first Fiori application. As you would have also seen in my past video on Bass, how we can get started with our first Fiori app. And that's exactly what you can do now. And since um, now I have a destination to my SAP S4 HANA system or my any of the above system, I will be able to use that uh, to be able to create a Fiori application. So I'm just going to show the process where we select destination and then it will be able to fetch all the service information. So going back quickly to the PPT, we have done step one to check in SMICM the port number and the host name. Of course, in, in case you, you are having a cloud connector in the middle, you should use virtual host and virtual port number. Don't use this one. But since mine is an internet facing system, I, I really don't uh, need to use the cloud connector at the moment. And then we have this destination, which is what we created and we've tested and we've added the extra bit of properties as well. And then now the third step is where we are going to bass and just going to check whether this destination is up and running. So let me go to my dev workspace and it's going to open a wizard for us to create our first application. And I can just go back and just give a project name. So we first have to choose a template. Let me come out of zoom mode and I will probably choose a Fiori freestyle application. And let's say UI5. for above packing and I will give a project name demo test click on next and I would like to definitely use an audit a service so I say yes click on next and now system prompts me to consume a service and select a system so I just drop down and you can see variety of systems to choose of course I will use our SAP system and now it will prompt me all the available destination in the Cloud Foundry. And you can see I have got my system name, which is what I've created. And there you go. It is now going to fetch all the information. So I just have to enter my username password here, which is also pre-populated by the system uh, as per my destination. And I click on this small login button so that it logs me in so hopefully now i guess we should have all the services uploaded and let me click on the drop down and voila you can see all my audit services popping up from my sap system over here fantastic so i'm going to choose one of the audit service and i can proceed now you can see the application is going to get generated automatically as you know each project is a folder in uh, cloud business application studio and that's also considered as a workspace so you can just right away say open in new workspace 
and then your project is going to get opened over here of course it will now have a connectivity built in in place and where does you get this information is you go to your web app folder and uh, sorry not web app it's in the root directory itself you can see the uh, the file name called uh, access app json and here is where you can see an entry for our order service uh, and of course my system id uh, to which it is going to connect so this is exactly the way you can go ahead and create your destination and you can also find the corresponding information for that in your ui5 project so i hope you enjoyed this demo session on introduction on creating a destination of course for detailed training on bass including fury development uh, you can subscribe my training on anubhavtrainings.com thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video